Hey, everyone, welcome to this special CUBE conversation. I'm John Furrier, host of the CUBE. Here in the Palo Alto studio, we have remote guests coming in to talk about real-time data as the currency of this future Gen AI market that's exploding in value, value creation. Lindley Henserling, Aerospike's Chief Product Officer. Lindley, thanks for coming on this featured conversation. John, thanks for having me. So obviously, you know, we've been covering this for the past year and a half. It's been the hype cycle of the, of, since my, in, in my, my lifetime, I've never seen this thing hyped up this big. Uh, and I've seen a few ways before. This is huge. This year has been the year of kind of putting the proof out there. You're starting to see generative AI as a category that's changing how data is being used. But now people are refactoring either existing workloads and or bringing net new capabilities in. This has been the top conversation, certainly in the cube and the industry. AI and machine learning have been a big part of that coming into this. As we get this next wave going, one of the big conversations has been, if you don't have the data in the point of generative mode, it doesn't work well. We saw hallucinations and whatnot coming in a big part of the conversation. So real-time information becomes huge. So we're now seeing this become the next conversation space because without that real-time data, the data sets aren't complete, AI's not complete. Um, this is super important and you guys are focused on this right now. Take us through your perspective. Yeah, so, so, so what, really, what it really comes down to is that context is everything. And so the LLM models, look backwards, if you will, and have a lot, broad, broad set of information about what's happened up to some point. And then to make it relevant in the instance of a business decision or a transaction, you have to add to it. And that means the application of real-time data. And so we think about this in, in sort of multiple ways. One is that application of real-time data, whether it's RAG or whether it's fine-tuning of the LLM, to have the most current data. You know, I like to think of, we've been trying to catch up with the present forever <laughs> in the world of IT, right? You know, it was batch mode, it was data lakes that were a month old and things like that. And now we need to be in the moment. And so most companies are not prepared for that. Most enterprises aren't. They know they have to apply this information to create the context that's happening right now when they use Gen AI or they'll get hallucinations. And so th this is a point where the real-time data is becoming more and more important. You know, we see that, you know, there, there, there's some stats that show that real-time data is growing like 35%. Um, where data overall is growing like, you know, 25, 30%. And that's because the, the portion of data that's real time that companies are striving to get to is moving up in importance and, and being applied more. So you see people talking about data lakes, people talking about real time streaming data being applied, et cetera, right? It's been interesting to see how the data market's been waiting for this moment in time, as you point out. It's like, it's like we're at the flashpoint of going to that next level. It's a huge, step function and AI and machine learning really has a huge potential, but it hinges on real-time data. So I want to unpack that with you. Um, how, what is real-time data one? And then is it out there and how do you harness it? I mean, can you take us through um, why this is so important, but really what is it? Is it available? How do you leverage it? And you know, how do you start ba taking those baby steps now to get, get this going? So, so what we see people doing is, is really looking at the problem of data ingestion in real time, meaning that they have all of the transactions, all of the information they have on a customer, whether that's a profile of the customer based upon you know, the cookies they've gone through, and those can be up to the minute, up to the second, right? And, and understanding that. And then the more of that context you can apply in real time, and supply to the LLM, or supply to what we call classical um, ML, if you will, <laughs> as well. Right, that hasn't gone away. That's still most of what's happening. But you know that that application of the context to make the decision be about the current context really makes more powerful decisions and more relevant decisions happen, whether it's through Gen AI or through classical AI ML. 
You know, it's interesting, as you, you mentioned LLMs earlier, but there's also multimodal foundation models. It's not just language, it's a lot of other data sets. And so you're seeing you know, a couple things going on. I won't say it's complex, but it's just different. And then there's other thing that's happening is that there's an ecosystem factor here because not all data comes from one place and enterprises might not have um, all the data themselves. They're going to want to bring data from third parties, either partners or whatever. So you start to see this, I won't say mashup, but this confluence of looking at the data differently because you got to start thinking about how the applications will be handling the data. So now, okay, that being said, that's kind of like a holistic view. Enterprises are trying to figure this out. There's, there's, no, there's no doubt that they're all like, mandating, we have to get in on engineer of AI wave, but they're starting to think about how to prepare. So what is, what is your view on that? Because the questions that people are asking now is how do I get started? What should I do with the data? What should every business executive be asking themselves as they look at this? Because they got to think differently, but the game is still the same. You're going to get the data working in the application. Take us through what and, and these executives should be thinking about. What questions should they be asking about the data? Well, I think it's it's really important uh, what you just pointed out that companies don't just have their own data that they have to deal with. They're ingesting data from multiple sources, and that might be market data. You know, we have a number of customers that are brokerages, and and they're ingesting continuously data. It might be IoT data that you're ingesting continuously from 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 the supplier of your equipment, right? that's providing a context for you to make decisions about the status of your equipment, right? And so that, that mashup of external data and internal data becomes really important. And being able to supply that in real time so that it's up to date is becoming key to differentiation and competitiveness. And so we see that happen. So the most important thing companies can do is be able to ingest that data, but also to make that data available to other applications, whether they're ML for training, whether it's creating the context that you're going to decide on, a stream of, of data that provides a, a signature, if you will, a signal that you have to make a decision on in the moment. And so being able to ingest all that data in a way that it immediately becomes available. And we see people doing that. Um, with with many different uh, tools, whether it be streaming data, you know, Databricks, Confluent, Red Panda. Red Panda is a great partner of ours, um, and we see a lot of things like that. I want to get into that because you brought up uh, Red Panda, and you have an event um, coming up um, that you guys are putting on the Real Time Data Summit. It's not an Aerospike event; it's an industry kind of kind of collaboration showcase, if you will, of just a diverse set of companies. Um, why are we guys getting this together? What, what's been the, the driver? I mean, obviously real-time data management is, is, is now gone from, you know, I won't say niche, but like specifically use cases to all use cases now are impacted in the enterprise. What, what's the motivation? Take us through the, um, the uh, creation and why was real-time data summit um, put together? Yeah, so just as you said, it's becoming, you know, it's becoming uh, the de facto standard that you have to have access to the real-time data and to be able to handle a lot of it coming in from different sources. And that means that there's an ecosystem that supplies that. You know, we have customers using multiple streaming solutions um, and cu customers that have multiple databases. Um, you know, we, we are often one of them, right? Um, not just one. We, we, we used to say that we, we don't want to sell to anybody that just has one database um, because they're, they're not really in the reality of what's going on in the world now. Um, that you have multiple streams of data, multiple uh, technologies providing those streams, and multiple um, data models. So, you, you know, whether it be graph, um, whether it be vectors, whether it be standard KV, whether it be relational database, and making all of that work together is what a lot of these streaming technologies are about, whether it be Spark, whether it be Kafka, Pulsar, et cetera. So it really takes this complete ecosystem to build a solution that delivers meaningful results. And for that to happen, we've all got to get together, educate customers jointly, give customers a place that they can come and understand that full ecosystem around real-time data. And that's what we're trying to do with this Real-Time Data Summit. And you got, who's going to be attending that? You got Amazon Web Services there. You had mentioned Red Panda, other names? Glean, Google. Um, 
so some of our customers, the trade desk, um, you, you know, other other customers as well, um, but really a broad set of both partners, competitors, and customers. You know what I love about this the, this kind of next gen generative AI market is that it kind of looks like a cloud cloud next gen too. Lendly, it's like you know, cloud was great because you can have horizontal scalability and uh, of applications, but data you got to have both horizontal scale and vertical specialization in the application. So now you got data moving in, it's not just an ingredient of an app, it's part of the development process. I know you guys are very much focused on that and this is what the industry is talking about. So how do, you, how do you rethink, how does an enterprise rethink their data management when they have to have both horizontally scalable data that's the right data, including real time, everywhere addressable for applications? Because Generate is generating data on the fly, it's a, it's a runtime kind of situation. So it's not like you can just pre-stage things like the old days, it's a whole nother paradigm. What's your reaction to that and how do you talk to that, this kind of like a new, new mindset? It's kind of a systems view, but like what's your perspective on this? Well, you know, I, I talked previously about, you know, getting the data that's in the context of right now in the moment, right? And to do that, it takes, you know, an infrastructure of streaming data coming in, but you have to be able to put all that together in one place to be a, to allow it to be queried, to be able to be event driven so that when data comes in and thresholds are matched or change happens, that you can then kick that data out to all the places it can be used, not just one place. It used to be that we, we thought, you know, I, I used to work in ERP systems. You know, the, the drive was to have one complete context of everything. Yeah. We gave up on that so long ago. It just didn't work. And now you have multiple technologies, multiple data sets, but it also has to be rationalized and come together someplace. And that means a fairly complex environment working cooperatively. And so that's part of why we did this real-time data summit to bring all the different technologies together to let customers see all the different components that they can use, the toolbox, if you will, and to demonstrate with cu customer-led discussions yeah. how to put those things together and deliver real value that's real-time in the moment. Yeah, and what's really interesting, why I think you guys are on this um, so so smartly is because the end-to-end -end workloads are well-defined and it's, it's really at the, from the device to the back core network, everything's in play here. So, you know, now you have a, a paradigm where you're seeing, uh, you mentioned inference and training, now you've got reinforced learning on data. So you have a constant, you know, interaction with data always going on. And then you got devices that are going to be processing on the device because of whether it's security or software and data supply chain challenges, making sure things are secure. I mean, again, throw that into the mix. It makes, it makes it sound more complex. So, okay, zoom out. How, how does an enterprise do this? How do they get prepared? Okay, how much data should they store? What kind of data? Because you start getting into this conversation, it's not just about AI, it's about everything. The full infrastructure, middle layer, and then how the application interacts. And if the data is not available, and if it's coming in from the device or coming out from the core, this is a reset. People yeah, are really so John, scratching their heads one, on this one. Yeah, so John, one of the things we focused on is being efficient about all this. And I think all the other vendors are working on this too, because you know we used to say we knew what data we needed, what was relevant to making a given business decision. And what Gen AI has taught us is that you need to see all the data, all the context, and and we as humans don't necessarily have a good feel for what is meaningful and impactful in making those decisions better. And Gen AI approaches things differently. And so being able to capture and retain much, much more of your data and more of the external data you have, and to be able to share data, right? One of the things the internet really changed in a big way and I'll, I'll just refer to supply chain here a little bit. You know, it used to be that people thought they were competitors with their suppliers and they were trying to work them for cost. And then the world changed. They said, what if we share our data? So the same thing is going to happen. There are going to be, you know, specific language models or SLMs that are going to be applied for given supply chains where people cooperate and share data and learn how to better optimize 
because of that sharing. But they, they need to be able to do that in the context of everything that's happening in the world. And if the last you know five years have taught us anything, the world can really change in major, major ways really, really fast. And so being able to have data that's in the moment becomes ever more important and being able to share a lot of that data and understand who you want to share it with and who you maybe don't want to share it with and have control of that data, that's going to be the challenge. And that's one of the things we want to have people talk about at this great uh, real-time data summit. That's a great point. I mean, you just basically pointed out the ecosystem importance there because of the data sharing, but also the data fidelity and also understanding the what quality of data in context to where it should be. And I think we're seeing a lot of that now play out in the, in the model market where you have the large language models and then specialty models emerging where they interact with each other. Why build something? You know, Bloomberg was public and they talked about this last week. They are resetting their entire uh, GPT model because they overbuilt it. They didn't have to do everything. They're going to they're going to tap into the large language model where appropriate, but also focus on their intellectual property, uh, on their data. So you're starting to see people starting to get how to use the models. Okay. Now under the covers, you got other challenges, right? You got operations and IT, right? So. You know, you got to build the infrastructure, you got to have the operators doing it, and then also the IT changes significantly. So I think this is where uh, I see the actions. I want to get your thoughts on, on one, the models, and then two, this event, is it targeted towards operations, IT, developers? What's the, the focus? So what's your reaction in terms of the models and then how the infrastructure supports them? And then who should be, um, tar who should be coming to this event? Yeah, so, so what I'll say is developers are foundational to all of this, right? <laughs> I mean, that's how, that's how we put together systems, you know, you know uh, and Drayson says software is eating the world, you know, and, yeah. and, you know, everything's becoming digital. And so developers are key to it. But we also have to keep in mind that it has to be able to be run, you know, operated efficiently. And so the operation side and everything, and, and I'll say this, that it's really telling that both AWS and Google are participating in this summit. And, and you know, what happens is when we go to the cloud, assembling these complex infrastructures becomes more of a Lego game. You don't have to necessarily have the operational efficiency expertise, you know, for your Kafka, you know, pipeline, for your uh, data storage. And, you know, all of us are delivering our solutions in the cloud as managed services, as, you know, as a service and, and in a composable way. Yeah. You know, we, we, um, you know, Red Panda is involved in this, um, you know, Databricks is, Confluent, and we plug into those environments and every database player has to do that because it is this ecosystem of data that's in motion continuously and it has to be in motion if you're going to be in real time. It's interesting, the event that you guys are putting on with the industry is, um, first of all, great leadership on, on Aerospike's side, congratulations on that, but really it is a, is a team sport because like you're pointing out, it's complex. You've got very cloud-like capabilities. You need to figure out the tech considerations for it. You got to have the real-time piece, which is super valuable and you guys know that well. But the other things in there, like observability now comes to data. It used to be that was a, a cloud native kind of term. You're starting to see open source developers driving in on the open models and building these specialty models and a lot more going on. And then specialty companies can participate, but they don't have to do everything. So starting to see the ecosystem being a big part of it. Um, is that a driver of this or is it just the timing of the, where we are? I mean, this is just a moment in time where uh, this is the inflection point. I, I think that it's just an inflection point in what's happening now. And that's what we realized. We realized that we don't control things alone no one vendor does, no one cloud vendor does. Even the hyperscalers don't have anything. You know, it's telling that there was this announcement yesterday by Apple, right? And, and you know, people were overwhelmed by, look, some of those people are competitors that they're announcing deals with. Yeah. And I think coopetition is raising its head in, in a really nice way, once again, to move mm -hmm. the capabilities that software and technology can apply for the world. Yeah. Um, and, and working together, we'll grow the markets in, in ways that we haven't for decades and it's going to be wild. Yeah, and they also showed that the devices where the computation's going to be, also the importance that real time sets the, sets the agenda for what Gen AI does, the, the importance of real time 
really becomes a super valuable piece of data in the, in the, in the equation of generative AI. So it's super relevant. I know you guys know that, so I'm kind of you know, preaching to the choir there, but I have to ask you a final question to, to wrap up, Lindley. Why should someone come to this event? Why is real time so important right now? I, I think that you know, trying to, to realize that the world is constantly changing, your business context is constantly changing, and real time is the way that you operate in the moment and in the context. And you, you know, I always like to say this, if you'd known that there was going to be a chip shortage a day before everybody else and you were an automotive supplier, you know, you might have purchased differently. <laughs> and, you know, even even up to the hour. And so it used to be that the only people who cared about real time was Wall Street. Yeah. Now everyone operates in real time or they operate at a competitive disadvantage. And I think that we want to make sure that all companies, all enterprises can be real time yeah. and be competitive. And those advantages are for everyone now. It's, a, it's not just getting that trading edge or for a hedge fund or a trader, frequency trader, that's what they did it. Now everyone can have an advantage. Free up your time, do something creative, automate on un, un, differentiated heavy lifting. I mean, being contextually relevant is a really important thing. <laughs> it, it's mandatory now, it's mandatory. Well, Lenley, we could go for another hour on this. It's a great topic. And again, it's super relevant for many, many reasons we just talked about. Thanks for coming on this, this feature, uh, Cube Conversation, and uh, good, good luck with the event and we'll see you there. All right, just, just one, one more thing. It's realtimedatasummit.com. You can sign up for free and look forward to having people participate and, and get value from this uh, great conference. Real time data summit, June 25th, North America, June 26th, Europe, Middle East and Africa. A lot of interactive sessions, check it out. The really, really cool conference. Thanks for coming on. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE. Thanks for watching. <laughs>